that isn't the case. The laws of nature work in a regular way and consequently create orderly phenomena. But it's a mistake to refer, to read into anything that's orderly, the thought that it must be designed. I think that's just a false dilemma there. Second, even if there is a designer, there's no reason to think that it has to be God. Uh, maybe uh, it's multiple beings or objects or things or processes. Third, I don't know if the design is all that great. I mean, if you were going to design a universe, would you make it for human life, for uh, a life like ours? Would you make it such that almost all of it could not support human life? Would you make parts of it blow up every now and then? Um, I'm not convinced it's such a good design. It's okay. <laughs> but I think there's room for improvement. Uh, the eternity of truth. Certainly there are eternal truths, but there doesn't, uh, uh, it's true that true ideas exist in a mind, but truths can exist without a mind. Uh, this is Dr. Kreef's sixth argument. Uh, uh, imagine we were all to disappear. Uh, would there still be one sun in the solar system? Yeah. We wouldn't be here to know it, but it'd still be there. Consequently, there can be truths without minds. Consequently, there can be eternal truths without minds. Uh, the moral argument uh, that, let's see, we should never disobey our conscience. Uh, I don't think that's a very good moral rule. There are people who fly planes into buildings and says, my conscience told me this was the right thing to do. I don't think everyone's conscience works all that well all the time. I think instead you need to go by reasons rather than just by feelings in many cases if you're going to get at the truth. Secondly, and in, in, uh, I agree that there are absolute uh, moral truths, if you like, that there are moral truths that are objective. I think moral relativism is about the worst idea anybody ever came up with. Um, what authority is behind all of this? Well, I think there can't be an authority behind morality. If there were, morality would be simply a result of a creature authoritatively commanding things. But then either those commands have reasons behind them, in which case it's not the authority that's creating morality, it's the reasons, or the commands have no reasons behind them. If they have no reasons behind them, they are utterly arbitrary. But morality can't be arbitrary. Morality is a matter of fairness. Treating people arbitrarily is not usually a good way to treat them fairly. Oh, uh, Bach's music, therefore God exists. Marilyn Manson's music, therefore there is no God. <laughs> okay. uh, the argument from desire. The basic idea is that everything we innately desire must exist. Well, there's a reason that things we innately desire might exist, and that is that it is because we evolved to have these desires. Uh, desires for things like uh, uh, nourishment and food and so forth. I think, I'm, I'd even question whether or not we have, I'm not even sure we have those desires. I mean, there's like uh, certain reflexes we have as a, an infant, but whether they have a concept of nutrition in order to desire it, I kind of doubt that. Uh, I don't think that uh, the idea of God is innate in people. There are plenty of people who have never heard of the notion of God. Maybe missionaries go out and they're enthusiastic and say, oh, yeah, that's what we're talking about. That's God. And the mission, but I think the primitive is going to say, no, 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 that's not what I have in mind. He didn't show up as Jesus and, and didn't tell us about it for a thousand years. Uh, uh, our God, you know, our universe came from an egg. It's, it's not coming from this guy. I think you've got radically different ideas here that people can have about God, which suggests that the idea is not innate in any sense. Um, practical arguments. Uh, uh, either... Well, if atheism is true, then most people are insane. Uh, either you believe, uh, either people who believe in God and right are right, or they are insane. I think that's uh, again a false dilemma. I think there's a third alternative. The third alternative is that humans are fallible. We make mistakes. We're emotional creatures. We respond very strongly to emotions, and I think that these can lead us astray. For example, we all, everybody, me including, uh, atheists too, right? Uh, 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 are easily victims of what's known as confirmation bias. We tend to like views, and you're probably noticing this right now, we all tend to uh, 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 like views that come to the conclusion we want and reject and be very critical of views that come to the conclusion we don't like. And this influences our beliefs. When do people become religious? Well, often when they're very young, or they're having an emotional crisis, either times when they're emotionally vulnerable. 
this is not going to be everybody, of course, but this is a, a, a typical, I think, of, of how religions uh, and various other views get generated. So I think the, the you know, claim that either people are right or they're insane is a mistake. I think it's, it's a bit uh, uh, crude. Uh, people are people and they make mistakes. We make a lot of them. We make them very easily. Read a critical thinking textbook, you'll discover this, right? Um, and I think those are the mistakes that, that people have made over time. Uh, Pascal's wager. Um, let's see. Uh, well, it's to our benefit. Why don't we bet that there is a God? Well, first of all, there's going to be lots of gods out there. Maybe the God that really exists is the one that's going to send you to eternity in hell unless you commit Harry Carey within three minutes of hearing of Pascal's wager. Oh, right. Uh, there may be a God that doesn't send people to hell for not believing him. Uh, maybe there are gods that send you to hell for believing in the Christian God. It's not two lottery tickets on the table. It's a million of them, right? One bet is probably as good as another. Um, I would suggest if you've got at least a decent God, you don't have to make that bet at all. He probably wouldn't want you to. Thank you, Dr. Corsi. If it's all right with both of you, we're going to allow five more minutes to rebut the rebuttals before going into your asking questions. Is that okay? All right. Uh, starting again with Dr. Crave. Whether atheism is a faith or not depends on which is the default position. And I'm kind of surprised that you didn't argue that agnosticism is the default position rather than atheism. Uh, what do we know anyway? The problem with agnosticism is that that really gets refuted by Pascal's wager. There's no chance of winning if you don't either say yes or no. Uh, I think the most fundamental philosophical question uh, about the arguments is when comes out when you ask, why isn't the Big Banger or the First Cause something other than God? Let's call it Oscar. Well, if there's a first cause and his name is Oscar, then God is Oscar. <laughs> you're, you're assuming that we first have to define God before we can prove his existence. I'm assuming the opposite, that uh, a hypothesis is tested by the data. Uh, each argument proves a different attribute of God, design, degrees of perfection, uh, by the common principle of sufficient reason, which I think no same person disputes. Uh, so the structure of the arguments is we have certain data in the cosmos, in ourselves. Uh, the God hypothesis is the only one that adequately explains the data. Therefore, there is this kind of being. Uh, and gradually, you, you, you add some attributes. Uh, the argument for contingency still makes sense to me. The story of a, a Native American boy asking his uh, father, who's very wise, what does the world rest on? And uh, his father says, G a giant turtle. The next day the boy said, what does the giant turtle rest on? And the father says, it's a good question, son. It rests on a giant alligator. Uh, and the next day the boy says, and what does the alligator rest on? And the father said, it's alligators all the way down. <laughs> but there has to be something to, to hold up the alligators. Uh, you say chance versus design, it's neither. There's a third alternative, the laws of nature, which create orderly phenomena. I think that's a category confusion. Laws don't create anything. They simply describe something. Uh, you ask, is the universe well designed? You s assume that you could design a somewhat better one. But I'm at least very glad that you think the universe is at least OK. <laughs> Uh, at least we can live in the same universe. Uh, finally, I think you mistake the point of conscience. It's not a feeling. It's, uh, it's an act of reason, an act of insight. Uh, the terrorist bombers who followed their conscience followed very badly formed consciences. And one of the things conscience tells you to do is seek the truth and form your conscience, which they didn't do. So their act was a sin against conscience. 
Finally, the free will and foreknowledge thing is fairly easy to answer. There is no such thing as foreknowledge because God is not a creature in time. He simply knows everything timelessly. So he doesn't push down dominoes and look into crystal balls and tell you what necessarily will happen. He simply watches it happen as it's happening. But that's, uh, that's old stuff. Uh, that's in Boethius, uh, one of those medievals. Uh, five minutes, that's, that's five, you're five. Okay. Um, responding here to Dr. Kreese's response to responses to uh, my own arguments. Uh, regarding the argument from evil, okay, uh, Dr. Kreese uh, first pointed out that uh, God gives us free will, that he doesn't force things upon us. But notice our free will is very limited. We can't make Jupiter disappear by blinking. We can't cause everyone to uh, grow warts by snapping our fingers. Um, maybe a little more restricted free will would have worked out a little bit better. Uh, I think that would be compatible with uh, uh, creating humans uh, the way God would want and creating less evil as well. What about natural evils though? I mean, here free will doesn't come into play. Nobody's around to see Bambi suffering the way she does. Uh, Dr. Kreef says, well, we shouldn't expect to know why God would allow these things. We're like, uh, uh, pets to a human owner or maybe uh, children to a parent. We're not always going to understand the reasons that God has for doing certain things. Well, suppose that's true. Uh, the uh, uh, folks fly the planes into the World Trade Center and they say, God told us to do this. And we say, God wouldn't do that. And they respond, you can't expect to understand his reasons. Right. Well, what's left of morality after we can't understand God's reasons? If God sent an earthquake, maybe he wants these people to suffer. Are we doing the wrong thing by helping them? How could we know? We can't know his reasons on Dr. Kreese's view. Uh, if we see the child drowning in the ice, well, maybe the child's a brat and God doesn't like him. What are you interfering for? You know, how do you tell? You can't. In order to hold that, there are all kinds of things going on in the world, but we can't know whether they're right or wrong, requires us to give up what is probably the most valuable grip we have on the world, which is our moral grip, our moral understanding, our empathy, our compassion for those who suffer and those who need help. Because after all, if this is maybe what God wanted, and we can't expect to know one way or the other, maybe we shouldn't interfere. I think to hold that view, you really have to give up on any kind of common sense morality, and I think that's a serious problem. Um, Dr. Kreef suggested that maybe natural evils were the result of moral evils and alluded to the Adam and Eve story. Uh, well, I, I think this is rather implausible. I don't think it's the case that in any sense humans can be held responsible for hurricanes. I think if there was a God, he wouldn't leave it up to one bozo to screw it all up, right? Because you know, right, if you put a switch there and say to a kid, don't touch that switch, you know what's going to happen. <laughs> and if that switch screws up the entire universe, you're a damn fool for making the switch. So I don't think God would create that kind of scenario. Finally, uh, uh, Dr. Kreef suggests we need, we need to trust in God and have faith in God that these bad things are really ultimately for the best. But again, there you are, uh, confronting the people who organized 9-11. And they say, look, just trust us. Have faith. This is what God wants. All right? We know better than that, and we know better because we have a sense of what's right and wrong, and we can apply it. We don't have to cancel it the second it seems to show that God doesn't exist. 